So one of the things that happens this time of year up here is the mushrooms come out. <laughs> and I don't know what it is, but um, I have become a mushroom forager and it brings me so much joy. And um, this week, uh, for the first time, I ate one of the mushrooms that I gathered. And I'm happy to report that I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just delightful. So, yes, we're talking about paradoxes this month, and today we're going to talk about the tyranny of the ore. And we're going to explore the tyranny of the ore and how our obsession with binary choices and even compromises can limit our potential and affect our well being. So today I'll be inviting us to explore the power of the and, which will enable us to change our lives for the better. So let's explore this thing called binary thinking, by meaning two ways of thinking. In our society, we are often encouraged to make choices based on either or decisions. Here are some binary choices you may have noticed in your lives. Shall I start a family or focus on my career? Shall I choose the healthy meal or indulge myself? Shall I choose what society would deem a sensible career or should I follow my passion? Shall I go to college or get a job? You can probably think of others. So I wanna share some consequences, not so good consequences, that, may experience, that we may experience as a result of binary thinking. We may experience regret and missed opportunities. Choosing one over the other can lead us to feel dissatisfied with our life. We may even experience mental anguish as a result of wondering what could have been if only I had made a different choice in my life. I knew someone who was, as an older adult, experienced a lot of regret that they didn't marry the person that had asked them to get married. They were now alone in their old age and they believed their life would have been so much better had they said yes to that marriage proposal. But instead, they chose to live their life in a way they thought they wouldn't be able to do if they had settled down and gotten married. And another consequence we may experience is the stress that comes from constant decision making, which can impact our well being. It seems we've been forced to choose between opposite opposing ideas and systems, which has led to our current challenges in the world. For example, the way our political system is set up, we're almost forced to choose to vote for either a Republican or a Democrat. And we may have even been told that if we don't, we're throwing our vote away. These binary choices are no longer sustainable. They aren't serving our highest good. For generations, we've been forced to choose between apparent opposites. And now, here we are, living in a world where it looks like we're on the brink of everything falling apart. I often remind myself that this is the way the creative process works. In order for something new to emerge, the old needs to fall away. Interesting, I just now thought of, <laughs> I just now thought of the mushroom again. The mushrooms, how they are emerging out of the decay in the woods. Our systems and ways of thinking that have served us in the past are no longer sustainable. We can no longer choose between economic growth or taking care of people, technological advancement or preserving the environment, or being conservative or liberal. In my opinion, it's way past time for us to seek a new way. Have you heard the term the third way? What is the third way? This is where the power of and comes into play. It's about combining seemingly conflicting ideas and coming up with innovative solutions. It's about strengthening relationships by finding common ground and shared interests. We need to be brave and vulnerable to have these kind of conversations. It's about learning to pursue a fulfilling career 
and nurturing your passions? How about building a side hustle or a hobby that complements your day job? It's about achieving balance in life through the integration of work and family, health and indulgence. And it's about the importance of moderation and flexibility in all things. Early on in my recovery journey, which has been a discovery journey, I was living from a mindset of everything being either right or wrong. It was the way I was raised. What I came to understand is that what is right for some of us may not be right for all of us. And besides, who am I to know what is right for someone else? We are each on our own unique paths of awakening. I was also very strict with myself and didn't allow myself much flexibility as a result of this right or wrong thinking. It either had to be this way or that way, but there wasn't room for the third way. What I learned was that this way of thinking and living wasn't serving my highest good. It wasn't good for my well being. The power of and is the path that challenges the notion that we must choose between opposites. It's a path that seeks to find solutions that bridge these paradoxes. The good news is it's a path that we've already begun walking down. We see technological advances being used to preserve our environment. Innovative methods and technologies like the Ocean Cleanup Project aim to remove plastic waste from the world's oceans. Drones are being used in planning large scale reforestation projects. And countries that prioritize the well being of their people are not only flourishing, but also setting an example for the rest of the world. And this is important. We're allowing systems that need to crumble to do so naturally, while working to strengthen those that still hold value. What we learn through taking science of mind classes is that we can choose to let go of old ways of thinking that no longer serve our highest good. And we can choose new ways of thinking that can open up new possibilities for ourselves and the world. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, encouraged us to be open at the top, meaning to keep an open mind so that we can be available to inspiration and innovation that can move us forward in our evolutionary process. One of my modern day heroes, Dr. Zach Bush, realized that most of our modern day diseases stem from the chemicals in our food supply and the destruction of our soil by the use of glyphosate and other unsustainable farming practices. He teaches that in order for us to thrive and be healthy, we must restore the soil that our food is grown in. And this in turn will help us heal our gut microbiome and support us in regaining vibrant health. Dr. Zach founded Farmer's Footprint, where farmers are being re-educated on how to farm without the use of antibiotics and chemicals. And as a result of using regenerative farming methods, farmers are seeing increased production within their very first year. And so I'd like to show a short video featuring beekeeper Samantha Fox. to be able to connect to the soil and the earth and... Hold on, I'm gonna make it full screen for you. It's a healing sense that I get when I do all of that because I do realize that the blood of my ancestors is inside of the soil that I'm working with daily. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're guiding me each time I come out here. They're surrounding me. They even have an actual museum that has the blood of the slaves in the soil, mm -hmm. inside of the soil, in jars. Yes, and it's loads of them. 
as a black woman, a mother, we have to wear our armor out here in the world, especially with so much racial injustice and negativity that we see daily. So having a place where you can take that armor off, be free, not only in your space, but in your mind is so essential. The soil is healing. I just like to plant my feet inside of the ground and just connect and the microorganisms inside of the soil, you know, they are able to balance out serotonin in your brain and really give you that natural remedy you need to some of the ills in the world today. Planting a seed might seem like something that's very small, but in fact, it is one of the most revolutionary things that you can do. I'm out here working, and when I'm touching the ground, I'm changing something in this universe, in this lifetime, in my life, I'm changing it for somebody else. I'm just empowered and thankful each day I can walk out here and um, be able to plant another seed and just create life and share that not only with my family, but my community. You're really just opening your heart to the world by farming. That's why I think it's therapeutic and that's why I want to talk about it all the time. That's why I'm so excited about it. That's why I'm sharing um, every chance I get to connect with the bees and all my plants and chickens because it's energy and it's life and I'm sure it's keeping me for sure. <laughs> I am Samantha Fox. I am a farm her, beekeeper, entrepreneur, and mother and plus mother of the world. I love how she said um, something about the microbes in the soil, you know, um, and how beneficial it is for us if we have depression or something. That's actually uh, scientifically proven. Also, uh, hugging a tree can do the same thing. So I want to remind us that we are living at a critical time in history where our old systems are no longer functional. And the questions I want to present to us are, are, are we willing to be courageous enough to let go of the tyranny of or thinking and embrace the end? Are we willing to let go of our old ways of doing things and embrace the new? We live in a totally different world now than we did pre-pandemic, and we need new and innovative solutions to the world's challenges. I encourage us all to think about the way we think about everything. Are we open at the top? Where within ourselves do we need to make the changes that will allow us to be the change we want to see in the world? The author Ralph Peters wrote, the greatest paradox of the 21st century is that in this age of powerful technology, the biggest problems we face internationally are problems of the human soul. So in conclusion, I challenge you to ask yourself, where in your life can you replace or with and to discover the third way so that we can all work together to create a world that works for all? There is no better time than now. Are we ready to embrace the and? Yes? Oh! I was gonna say, I can't hear you. Are we ready to embrace the end? Yes. yes. Okay. Great. And, and so it is. Amen. Thank you.